Hello Smite fans and welcome to day number two of the Super Week of the Smite Oceana Pro League. We've got three very exciting series coming up for you all with playoff implications. Joining me on the commentary desk today is Timmy. Yes, and the first game that we'll be looking at is going to be Pandemonium versus Sin Gaming. And after that we will be looking at both of the Die Wolves games. I know a lot of you were missing that game yesterday as it was changed due to rescheduling. I'm going to go ahead and get into picks and bans in just a second here. And uh, I'm very interested to see how these teams ban. Pandemonium seem to have uh, the most planned out drafting phase of any team in the OPL. Yeah, Pandemonium tend to go for a team comp which is a lot more structured around itself. Not so much, you know, as individuals. Odin game banned out, not all that surprising. Very highly picked or, uh, or banned. Guan Yu also going to be next up. The two most uh, focused... Uh, yeah, so that tends to be the uh, case in OZ Warriors, very strong at the moment. Guan Yu, the healing is just, uh, really seems to be overpowered at the moment. Yes, and the other thing, Ares actually getting banned out uh, there. We don't see him all that often. We saw him played once, I believe. I'm expecting that either an Athena ban here or Athena getting picked up immediately, as she has had a 100% pick ban rate so far, when on this final ban here from Sin Gaming. Uh, it's going to be Raijin, so Raijin being allowed in competitive play in OC the first time this week. We saw him uh, almost in every single game yesterday, providing a lot of magical damage, but not necessarily a lot of success. Chiron going to be the first pick here for Pandemonium. Pretty standard, considering what we've seen out of them. Uh, that's something that Subfloor is very comfortable on. Yeah, Subfloor absolutely loves Chiron. So does the rest of OCE. Uh, but just going back on the Raijin, I feel like people have been playing him in the OPL yesterday just simply because he's new and maybe people don't know exactly how to play against him but i agree with you hasn't been really shown up all that much wasn't really performed very well isis and capri are gonna be the first two picks before sin gaming so it's worth noting for uh, sin gaming that they don't have their regular mid laner in their roster this week it's going to be empty wolf filling in that role again like we saw yesterday seems to be something he's pretty comfortable with isis not the most mechanically demanding of mid lanes and provides a lot of objective secure as well. Kepri going to be picked up for Sin as well for their uh, for their support. Horizon maybe the solo lane, but more than likely support given that revive. Sobek and Awelix now picked up. This is just a standard pandemonium team comp. Lots of knockups into that Awelix. Rama now picked up for Sin Gaming. Yes, Rama is going to be able to carry his team a little bit later on if he can manage to get to that late game uh, late. Uh part of the game but like we said earlier pandemonium pretty much picking for the team uh by the team the willish so that combination is incredibly dangerous with how much displacement it has and how much synergy they have agni banned out from sin gaming focusing down ochita that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why take away agni no. soul still on the board and that's what pandemonium played in like 95 percent of their games thor now taken away by pandemonium looking to take away a little bit here from hs247's god pool but I guess, you know, that's not a huge takeaway from him. Um, he's got plenty of other guards he could play. Janus now, taken away by uh, Sin Gaming. Yeah, Ochita plays a pretty mean Yarns, but like you said, Sol still on the board, and Sol's been played a huge amount in the mid lane. Naja is going to be a final ban, uh, courtesy of Team Pandemonium. Yeah, again, they're just looking to take away from HS247 uh, with Agony off uh, there she is. the team for this week. <laughs> uh, HS is definitely the best player on Sin Gaming. Athena now picked up by Sin. Your 100% ban streak continues to me. And given the Capri there, well, this is actually pretty interesting. It could go either solo or support. You could switch either these round. Capri though, I feel just does better from support than uh, than it does from solo. Athena, you could put either place. And so I expect to see that in the solo lane. Now we can see Sol and Sylvanas picked up by Pandemonium. And now every single member on Pandemonium has a knockup for Rosa Wheelix. And they all play in gods that they have played the majority of this split. Yeah, that's a huge knockup team, and with the Wheelish running around the jungle, it's going to be plenty of opportunities as soon as Ro hits level 5, so expect to see him do quite a lot of work. That also means it's going to be a Sobek in the solo lane, most likely up against either the Athena or the Raven. Either of those gods can be played in the jungle or the solo lane. I believe the, the Raven is going to go jungle as we head into the game now. We can see Raven is going to be in the jungle being played by HS247. And the Athena solo played by Fonke, that really kind of uh, suits his playstyle a bit more uh, Fonke, the Athena rather than the Kepri. 
and Kepri, it's, I don't know, I, I, it's been played solo, it's been played jungle by week in that one game, but really, it's just so much better out of support than it is out of any of the other lanes. Uh, already, as we get into this game, we have a pause coming out from the jungler from Sing Gaming. We're just going to have a little bit of a chit-chat about this roster. Actually, while we do this, we might as well introduce our teams. On the left side of your Spectator UI, on the bottom side of the meme map, we have Team Pandemonium. Sporks is going to be so back in the solo lane. Ro in the jungle as a Willish. Uchida is going to be in the mid lane as Sol. And your dual lane will be Swayer and Subfloor as Sylvanas and Chiron. And on the right side of your Spectator UI, under the red health bars, we have got Sin Gaming. Fonke in the solo lane as Athena. HS 24-7 in the jungle as Raven Empty Wolf. Substitute Extraordinaire in the mid lane as Isis, Horizon, and Temple Wolf will make up your duo lane as Kepri, the Giant Bug, and Rama, the man with the snipe. So we've pushed through that pause now. A lot of early warning coming out from Pandemonium, obviously uh, knowing their opponent very well, looking to spot out an early invade. You mentioned uh, before the Extraordinary uh, sub, uh, sub Empty Wolf. The normal mid laner for Sync Gaming is Agni, however, he has been away in the uh, past two previous weeks, now for three weeks in a row, uh, not 100% sure on what's going on there, few uh, life commitments that Agni couldn't come back in. We have seen uh, Empty Wolf on Isis before, but he didn't do all that great, he ended up dying quite a fair bit. Ready now, as we pass zero seconds on the clock, game just getting started, pretty standard starts. Coming out of both of these teams, we could see uh, Sin Gaming taking away the right-hand side mid camps very early on, just looking to get some early uh, experience in gold, and now heading for their blue buff. This Athena solo, Timmy, how do you think this will perform against the Sobek? We saw it uh, yesterday, I believe, and it wasn't all that great. The, uh, the Defender of Olympus couldn't really be used all that uh, liberally, simply because if you left the lane, you end up losing your tower or losing a lot of farm. I feel like if HS and Fonke switched up the the gods, it would have been a much better. Well, we can see now looking towards the left side here, HS pushing out Pro and a cheetah. They're looking for the mid camps here. Which team will take a good stun there by Empty Wolfie? Here comes and Subfloor. It looks like Sin are going to take it. Subfloor's rotated in here very early. Knocks back Empty Wolf, taking a lot of poke here, and he'll fall down in just a second. Ro credited with the kill. First blood going the way of Team Pandemonium in under a minute. I think that's the worst person you could give uh, first blood if you're Sing Gaming at the moment, because as soon as Ro hits level 5, we mentioned before, every member of Team Pandemonium had some kind of knock-up, so Willich is going to be absolutely swinging. HS, now getting pursued by Ro in the jungle, is going to get very low, maybe able to escape. Yeah, he does manage to creep back under his tower, Empty Wolfie, now returning to the mid lane to uh, clear up the minions here and grab some golden experience for himself. But still, a lot of early pressure coming out from Team Pandemonium. And well, as you mentioned, once they start getting rolling, this Awilix is going to be starting to do some work. Let's take a look at our duo lane now. Talk about the matchup there. We've got a Sylvanas and Chiron up against the Kepri Ram. Now, Ram doesn't have the best laning phase out of the AD carry um, god pool, but having a Kepri with him will certainly help his clear. Yes, Capri does have the strongest wave clear of the Guardians, and the fact that Chiron's clear isn't extreme, like say a Medusa or a Neath, it kind of evens out, and in fact, it's been pretty much back and forth as to who has the minion aggression in this left-hand side. I expect it'll be more going the way of the Chiron Sylvanas though, just because Sylvanas has got probably the same amount of wave clear than Capri, maybe um, just Very a little slight. bit less. Plus, it's got healing as well, combined with Chiron healing. They definitely win the poke battle there and should have advantage in this lane. Absolutely, that is the major point, that they do end up winning the poke battle, just because they can be so much more aggressive. Even an interesting item, though, is Subfloor going for the Thousandfold Blade as his first item. Maybe looking for a Massamoon. Definitely looking for the Massamoon. He's played that um, quite a few times. Could possibly look for Heartseeker, but I really doubt it. Uh, we no. can see now, Ochita's just hit all five. In fact, everyone... Um, on the mid to right hand side of Team Pandemonium have hit level 5 so, so look for a gank here. We can even see now Ro camping out the uh, the solar lane here a little bit. This is a favorite tactic of Team Pandemonium. Help Spork roll and get ahead. He can make some early rotations and do some damage. Oh, great knock up there into the ultimate from Ro. Hit at max distance. Takes down Fonke very swiftly. That's what we were talking about. A Willish with a team full of knockups. As soon as he hit level 5, get that ultimate. 
you're gonna be swinging like a truck and you're gonna be killing. Dina Swear rotating towards the mid lane Sporks as well. Teleporting in on a ward, take away the right hand side mid camps, and now it looks like they're gonna invade the, the blue buff here. Fonke isn't around to defend this one, so this should be pretty free for Pandemonium. This is all, also gonna hurt Fonke quite a bit, as so far he has no items whatsoever that gives him any base mana or MP5, so he's really gonna be hurt by losing that blue buff. You can see though, three members of Sing Gaming trying to secure the red buff, just make sure that Pandemonium don't steal that as well. Left hand side of mid camps now, falling the way of Sin Gaming. Take a look at Fonke here quickly, going the uncommon sash first, but then building into boots. Do you think he's just, do you think he was trying to rush Warlocks or he's just having that set up to later build it into an E star? I'm honestly, I'm not too sure. He may have gone into the boots just simply because of uh, the gank that Ro put on. He needs to know, he knows that he needs to have a bit more mobility if he's ever going to get away. So. I'm not too sure. Economically, not the most viable thing, honestly. Alright, we passed four and a half minutes in the game here. Team Pandemonium leading 2-0. to zero. Pretty much expected out of these two squads. Sin Gaming currently sitting at the standings at 2-4 and four after having losing 2-0 to Avant yesterday. Uh, trying to get through this period without their mid laner as best they can, but the signs right are not positive at the moment. Right side, Fonke in a lot of danger. Defender of Olympus is used to try and get out, but it is not quick enough as Lurk in the Waters does manage to pick him up too quickly, followed by a few little basic auto attacks. Okay, Fonke gonna fall down again. As we mentioned, a favorite tactic of Team Pandemonium is to camp out that soul lane and get Sporks rolling. Yeah, the fact that you get the, the soul lane rolling, get the ball rolling, then you can just kind of leave it. Junglers tend to move more towards the mid, mid lane as the support comes in as well. So very high traffic area and allows the solo laner to just continue farming and snowballing himself. Pretty Gold Fury starting to be warded up now. I team Pandemonium probably not looking too seriously at that objective just yet, but want to control the vision moving in and out of that pit. They want to make sure that if Team Pandemonium start to really feel themselves, they could go to try and rush down the Gold Fury while something else is going or try and bait out a fight. So they want to make sure that they know. Team Pandemonium also now warding up the Gold Fury. Both teams have vision, but neither of the wards are sentry wards. What I really like about Pandemonium's comp as well is we mentioned this about the dual lane, but this is uh, pertinent. We're talking about all aspects of their game. Oh, right. Side. Looking for a gank on the left hand side. Hits Empty Wolf, uh, sorry, Temple Wolf there. Hit the uh, Flutter Step. And now looking for the kill here. Leaving it for subfloor. Just getting his 80 carry head. Good guy, right? Oh, no. Kill steals it at the end there with an in hand. Uh, so with the Feather Step, not the Flutter Step. Uh, he managed to go with Temple Wolf there. That's actually a really great little uh, mechanic of the game there. Is that with the Feather Step. You actually move with the character as they dash away or roll. Yes, uh, although when you do hit it, you do uh, you do uh, cripple and root them for a very split second. And also, while you're flipping over, over on top of them, you are actually immune, untargetable to a lot of things. So you can use that to bait out a lot of uh, high burst abilities or ultimates and get out of it completely unscathed. Oh, that is important in the mid lane as Swayer went for a pull there. Empty Wolf used his purification and now Pandemonium looking for the red buff and they steal that one away. Sin Gaming, Sublord taking some damage here but not going to worry about it as he does have a Sylvanas on his side to help him heal back up. No, also that and also the passive from the Chiron healing anyone who is the lowest health around him just a little bit every time he uses an ability. Team Pandemonium, they're very much plus for gain sing gaming out of place well, yeah, and in the mid lane. empty wolf is pulled in there by road kept revive enough to keep the mid lane alive for now but ochidi uses his ultimate empty wolf he pops down the circle protections heals himself back up but there's only a limited amount of time that he has left on this earth as he falls down to ochida ochida now one zero and one feeling fairly comfortable and comfortable with Ro coming around everywhere three zero and two HS247 looking for Sway and picks him up very quickly after landing the ultimate. Right now has got no mana, couldn't help his support there at all. Now Sing Gaming on the board with a singular kill, but five kills to Team Pandemonium. Blue buff goes to Sporks. And now, if we take a look in the mid lane, Ochita is getting camped out a little bit. It, it, Ochita and Ro are widely considered the best players 
on Team Pandemonium. A lot of people consider them the, the carries of of this squad and they just help their, their other lanes get fed. It's not detracting away from the skill of their, their side lanes, but that's just where it seems to be the uh, the better players exist for Pandemonium is the mid and the jungle lane. Um, we can see HS247 rotating to punish the left-hand side of Team Pandemonium. He doesn't have his ultimate available, so Subflor not too worried about that gank. Just giddy up away. Um, but yeah, o Ochita and Ro are definitely the players you need to camp out on Team Pandemonium if you want to take a game away from them. Yeah, a little interesting fact about Ro in particular. I believe he got to Diamond 1 in the league, uh, in the in the ranked games before uh, Australian servers came up. He got that on NA with about 300 pain. That really just shows his uh, mechanics. Temple Wolf being ganked now. Paul doesn't land from Sway as Temple Wolf goes up in the air. Three snipes, two snipes, sorry, onto subfloor. Third one lands in the end. Row looking for the kill here, looking to take it with an in hand. And he does, but HS247 has rotated. Row jumps onto Suku. Great knock up there from Sway. Keeps his jungler alive. Yeah, so an ultimate expanded for a life that's completely worth for Team Pandemonium. I don't really feel that Swayer needs the ultimate all that much at this moment, so he can just kind of throw it out, although HS is coming back around the backside for a little bit of revenge. Yeah, he's looking for Subfloor now, roots to be placed, Spirit Ball doesn't land from Empty Wolf as Subfloor giddy ups away. Yeah, Spirit Ball missing the mark due to the giddy up, just allowing him to get more distance a lot quicker. I'm not, I'm not too sure what Sing Gaming can do at the moment, they're really trying to just find something, but... Team Pandemonium are just always one step ahead. Solo lane, Sporks pushing up that tower. It's under 50% HP, so gonna be feeling some pressure. We haven't said Fonke's name a whole lot in this game, except for when he's been dying. Usually we see him make some great rotations out of the solo lane for his team. Well, like I said, you know, solo lane, you don't really want to rotate, especially when you're losing. You can see his tower is at about one third health, and he's been game bullied out by Sporks. You could argue that he does have the Defender of Olympus, but that means he just leaves the lane open for Sporks to just take. He uses his Defender of Olympus, but he's got a teleport to get back to the lane when he needs to. Yeah, that is a good row, although Ro has found himself a Robin. Not going to be able to do enough as he can't really burst him down all that much. Just keeping the pressure on the jungler. See, subfloor putting some pressure onto Temple Wolf there. Looking to hit him with a Centaurus ult, but doesn't manage to find it. Temple Wolf dashes away under tower. Sway just going to heal up Subfloor, who took some poke out of that ultimate. Yeah, it's unfortunate, unfortunate for Subfloor. Couldn't quite hit the mark, so he couldn't get the masterful shot off to secure the kill. Take a look at solo lane again. Sporks and Fonke. Mentioned Fonke getting punished quite heavily. Taking a look at our items, we can see Sporks hasn't even gone into any magical defense. That's how little uh, he respects Fonke. He's just gone straight into a breastplate of valor, give him cooldown and mana to just use his abilities farm up the wave, and offer protections from damage sources elsewhere. So, well, Fonke is also going into the Breastplate of Vela by the looks of it. He's got the Tier 2, the Silver Breastplate. He, they may be getting it simply for the cooldown and mana, but also tower damage and minion damage. When you play a Guardian of the Soul, and you tend to try and get damage by the other person and let minions do a lot more of the work. Righty, now we pass. Coming up to 12 minutes into the game, System Blind up really kills a little bit of a a slower period in the game than the start when we saw a multitude of kills come out from the side of Team Pandemonium. Taking a look at our graphs for the first time, we can see it is a 5,500 XP, 3,500 gold difference going the way of Team Pandemonium. Alright, so though, Funke again pulled with a gravity search, knocked up, still inside of Lurk in the Waters, Roe credited with his fifth kill. My goodness. Alright, we can see the tower on the right side gonna go down. Subfloor chasing a by HS247. Knock up from Sway doesn't land as HS is using his purification. Subfloor though, dashing away. Temple used his ultimate as well. Wasn't able to find Subfloor there. It seems like a Sim Gaming are going for these ganks, but just not executing properly. Maybe it's missing agony or maybe it's just a deeper team issue. Tier 1 tower on the right hand side fell and now the tier 2 tower is being pressured by Roman Sports. Yes, and now Horizon Temple Wolf are going to be looking to get this left-hand tower on the left-hand side, Tier 1. Funke, teleporting in, Spirit Ball doesn't land. Uh, and now Sporks knocking up HS247. Swaya there, the heals. In comes Funke with the Defender of Olympus. HS and Funke still looking to chase here. Left-hand side, Temple Wolf and Horizon take down the Tier 1 tower there. Ro caught out a little bit here. HS looking to get some more damage down, but Ro manages to get away on Suku. 
That's just why Willish is so strong. You can just get away. As long as you avoid a lot of the hard CC, jump on Suko, just run away. Stop has been pretty pressured under his tower here, but he's going to be able to... Uh... Farm up this way, pretty okay. He's got RC to allow him to lifesteal as well as his inbuilt healing in his kit. So he shouldn't sacrifice his tier 2 tower, unlike what Sin had to do on their right hand side. Yeah, so I feel that Demonium right now, they're just where they need to be, when they need to be. Where Sin Gaming, they're kind of lacking uh, behind a little bit. Their rotations aren't quite as fast enough, they don't have enough vision to really predict what Pandemonium are going to be doing. So they're kind of getting caught out. D Ward and the Go Fury, not going to be looking for it just yet. No, just waiting to get another pick or two and then looking for that objective. This is the time in the game where Pandemonium typically starts looking for those objectives if they don't get something like a deer side beforehand. And they've got a really great comp to do it with as well. You know, the, the healers coming out from Swayer uh, is going to help his team be able to siege that objective. Subfloor's got life steal and internal heals. You got burst damage from the Chiron and from the Soul. You can zone out effectively with the Sobek and a Wheelix combo, which is a really good objective taking comp. Yeah, like you said, very good for sieging. They can also do that at the towers if they want to later on in the game. And they can just bait out a fight at the Gold Fury, like you were mentioning. They can take a little bit of poke from it, it doesn't matter, they just heal it all up, and they force Sin Gaming into a very awkward position. Sin Gaming now looking towards the Gold Fury should be able to ward this one up. They've placed this Sentry Ward down, and I'm not sure why they're not clearing out that Pandemonium Sentry Ward. Um, maybe just trying to bait something from Pandemonium? I'm not too sure. It's definitely in range. Maybe they just don't... I'm actually not too sure why they're not doing it. There's actually two Pandemonium Wards in range of that once in game. We're oh, now taking a lot of damage here, and he falls down to empty Wolf Swayer. Nice format knock up there, but no Wheel is gone. The Synergizer with Circle of Protection goes down, looking to prevent a lot of damage to empty Wolf, but Ochita blows him up there with his Soul Ultimate Temple, taking a lot of hurt. He hates this 247, uses his Ultimate looking for Ochita, but Ochita just barely manages to get into his damage resistant form for. Uh, escaping the damage of HS subfloor in the back line now looking to deal some damage but he's taking a lot of hurt himself Sporks trying to keep his teammate alive frontlining with Swayer manages to successfully do it looks for the dash under Fonke but didn't land it Pandemonium could go in quite aggressive here they've got the minions underneath the tower Horizon's ultimate is down it was used on Temple Wolf and has now expired Sporks incredibly big, trying to zone out the rest of Sin Gaming look for a kill HS 247 is going to get picked up by Ochita so a nice, a nice siege there, Pandemonium lost row, able to counter that and pick up some kills of their own onto Sin Gaming and take a tier 1 tower. Uh, good plays there from Pandemonium, take a look at the grass again, 8000 XP, 5800 is the goal difference as we hit the 16 minute mark in the game. It's climbing quite quickly and quite steadily for Team Pandemonium, that just simply means that they know what they're doing, they're farming very efficiently and they're gaining momentum faster and faster. Take a look at some of our builds, particularly the mid laners. See, Ochita has the Doom Mob fully stacked, but Empty Wolf, with three deaths, his Doom Mob is only at 15 stacks. He has chosen here to go, on, go into the Dynasty Plate Help, giving him some power um, and penetration, as well as physical protection, just to try and lower some of the damage being put out here by Ro. Uh, I feel like it's, uh, it's, it feels early to be saying this, but I feel like it's uh, too little protection too late. Uh, we've seen an NA in the SPL this week, a lot of mages have been building that uh, level 1 uh, hack uh, very early on to prevent early aggression out of the junglers, and that seems to have been giving mid laners a little bit more survivability. Pandemonium now, starting up the gold fury. Yes, and just to re- oh, actually, no, Rama is up in the air, Snipes coming out, first snap, second, and third? No third, only two shots, five, both missing. Oh, Sporks, they were silenced out by MP Wolfie's uh, circle of protections. Temple dashing away, and Sporks is in lurking in the water. Subfloor taking a hell of a lot of damage here, but Swear is able to heal him back up. Ochita using the ultimate. Ro looking for something here, but not going to quite be able to find it as he's taken very low. Gold Fury going aggressive. HS picks up Ro here. Subfloor almost picked up, but Sanctuary's away from all of the damage, and now giddy upping away. Sporks picks up MP Wolf. Ochita picks up Horizon as Fonke is chasing down Subfloor and picks him up. It's a two for two trade so far. But Timberwolf is in a lot of trouble here, and it could soon be another kill for Panda. Fonke gets a taunt there, but not enough to save Timberwolf's life. And now Fonke may pay for it with his own life, dashing away, but he's dashing towards Pandemonium's objectives. Hey, Jess, Timberwolf 7 now back into base, trying to save himself to deny the deer side. Fonke is going to go down to Sparks. Go through, not really an option right now, as the only single target 
physical damage is Ochida is however going to focus on this tower. To be able to take down this tier 2 tower, uh, Soul does a lot of uh, in-hand damage as we know, so a lot of tower damage is going to be available. You've got the good Siege coming out of Swaya and Sports, both very tanky, and with heals available through Swaya. Down falls the tier 2 tower, and that's going to be pretty much the equivalent, if not more gold, than what they would be getting at this point in the game. Yeah, Gold Fury, those who don't know, scales up over time at the beginning of the game. It only gives, I believe, 150 gold per person, and it starts to scale up to around 350 by about 20 minutes. Righty, let's take a look at HS now. He's got himself a stone cutting sword, Timmy. Why would he be going into that here? Because he wants to please me. I love stone cutting sword. I think it's <laughs> one of the best, best items. A bit on the expensive side, but... Basically what it does is every time you hit someone, you take protections away from them and steal it for yourself. This does appeal to him as he wants to be a little bit more tanky on that warrior jungler and try and remove some of the physical protections for Tampa Wolf. Take a look at Roe as well. He's gone into a spirit robe. I really like this pickup when you take a look at Sin Gaming's lineup. A lot of CC on their side of things and the damage mitigation you get when being CC from the passive on Spirit Robe is going to be coming into play a lot. But the Athena Taunt, Root from uh, the Raven, Isis Spirit Ball, Pluck from Horizon as well as a Root. You've technically got a Cripple on the side of Temple Wolf, so a really smart pickup here. A Brawler's Beat Stick as well to prevent some healing coming out of Isis and Raven. Yeah, that Brawl Speed Stick is going to be important for when the Circle Protection is down. Horizon coming in with the Defender of Olympus on top of him. Not going to go on the Gold Fury as it is leashed for the time being. Pandemonium are going to be looking to fight in just a moment. Way are rooted here, but nothing following it up as Sin Gaming looking to choose to engage with carefully. They are a significant amount of XP behind, so they need to get the perfect team fight here in order to uh, take it away from Pandemonium. But Pandemonium have all five members. Rogue knocks up Fonke here, looking to engage on the solo laner, who takes a lot of damage, unable to dash away just as yet, but manages to eventually do so. Rogue, though, still looking for Fonke here, recognizes he's pretty uh, squishy still at this point. Sports. Flings it back, better set there from Rogue, looking to pick up Fonke and takes him out towards the Gold Fury side, digs down subfloor in the Centauri's ultimate, two shots on the Horizon, all three land on the Horizon, circle protection popped by Empty Wolf as well, Horizon forced to use a revive on himself, and it is popped, Ochida picks up HS247 and Temple will take it very low, Empty Wolf taken out at this point, looking to deal some damage before he falls, Rose got himself a double Dig kill, aside. Ochida's got himself a double kill, five for nothing trade there for the boys of Team Pandemonium, as you said Timmy, DSI. Looking like it's going to be a fire giant. Fire giant indeed. And that's just simply the composition of Team Pandemonium. You have to engage onto them first because if not, they're going to displace you severely, take you off one person at a time, and throw the numbers game into their advantage. You have to fight them first, and at the moment, Sin Gaming just cannot fight them. Yep, looks like the fire giant going to be under a uh, quarter health here. No one from Sin Gaming even close to being able to contest that one. Pandemonium, a big victory off the back of that fight for them. Gold Fury still has not even been touched. This is a fire giant before a Gold Fury. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, that's pretty much only happens during the deer side. I can look at a grass. We can see 12,500 XP as well as 9,500 gold in its favor of Team Pandemonium. This is looking very grim for the boys at Sing Gaming. So if Team Pandemonium win this game and the next game, they are guaranteed uh, first place in the OPL and a spot at the uh, LAN event at CGPL at Australia Technology Park in Sydney. So a lot on the line for them uh, in this game and this series uh, as a whole. Uh, they can take... Uh, why can't take any opponent in the OPL uh, lightly next week? They can... I'm sure they'll be trying out some of the strats that they normally wouldn't use uh, given that they've already progressed essentially to the next stage of competition. Yeah, they may be looking for a little bit of a new formula but like you said, they, they are pretty much guaranteed to go to land if they do win this game. Temple Wolf game plot underneath his own tower, destroyed by Subflaw. A cheater picks up Fonky there as well. Tier 1 tower falling extremely quickly there. Sin Gaming now with three members forced to defend this tier 2. Uh, they should probably just give this one up and try and defend the Phoenix. Swaya blinks it there, knocks up two members. Empty will preemptively purification, his but is just blown up by Sporks and Ochita before he can even pop his ultimate. Bro just dives the back like here while the rest of his team forces down the tower. Tier 2 tower falls, and now Pandemonium are looking for the Phoenix. Two ultimates still available with Subfloor and Ro. So if these names from Pan Pandemonium look familiar to you in the international scene, it's because they are. They were the avant-garde of last year. And so far in Oceanic history, they have been undefeated. So they're 
HS247 purification out of Rose ultimate. And that was a very smart play by HS247, but Ro had an even smarter one when he kept auto attacking because he does have attack speed and power bonus when he uses that ultimate. HS247 falls down there to Sporks. Yeah, very, very grim. And I said at the beginning of the game as well, Empty Wolf, he has played the Isis before and he has ended up getting picked off quite a lot. Now, 1, 6, and 2, he's not really much of a factor at level 15. Spock's going in for a bit of disruption. Spirit Ball doesn't do a whole lot, but he is getting quite low. He, they'll be happy if he falls down here. They don't really need Sporks in this fight. Healed up here from Swayer as well, so Sporks just going to stay alive even longer. Ro takes down Foggy. All three Phoenixes are down for Sin Gaming. And Ammonio could possibly force an end here if they want it, but instead they're just going to back by they've each got almost about 2,000 gold in hand at this point so they're gonna go back and get some final items and siege down for the win i swear sporks he must be some sort of a god because throughout this split including this game he has only ever died five times my goodness that's insane talk about staying alive staying alive <laughs> no Can you sorry please? there's a reason i didn't <laughs> Alrighty, let's take a look at our player damage at this point in the game. Subfloor, top of the charts, uh, with 16,000, followed by Ochita, Roe, and Spork Swayer down at the bottom. But he's been doing a lot of healing this game. We can actually look at his player healing. It's sitting at 9,000. That's pretty severe, considering that uh, Sylvanas healing early on is very good, but the healing itself is not all that strong late game compared to, say, like a Guan Yu. It does, however, provide protections. HS247, aggressed on by Ro, uses the ultimate to get out, but his jump goes straight onto Sporks. Ochita picks up Empty Wolf, HS247, picked off by Ro, and now Pandemonium looking for the win here. Swayer with his signature jump, looking very happy as his team looks to close out this game against Sin Gaming. Fonke dashing away there, Sporks though, immediately plucks him in. Fonke pulled by Swayer, great CC chain revive, comes out from Horizon to save his solo laner's life. Up goes Temple Wolf into the air, Titan under 50% HP, Swayer gets a three-man knockout just to stop any further aggression as the Titan falls. Game one going the way of Team Pandemonium. Team Pandemonium once again showing their dominance in this split, still undefeated. The only times they ever dropped a game inside of a split, inside of a set was yesterday against Tainted Minds and very long ago against Direwolves. Game number two is, I'm feeling, going to be going towards Pandemonium, but you never know, there might be some sort of miracle upset. Go ahead. Yeah, we, and... saw, we, we, we spoke to Subfloor yesterday after their set against Tainted Minds, and they said they drafted... Uh, pretty poorly in the game that they uh, lost to Tainted Minds. You know, maybe they're taking, they're going to relax in this one. I'd advise against it, but we don't know. We're going to take a short break here, folks, and then be back very quickly with game number two between Team Pandemonium and Sin Gaming. Stickle. 